Here to talk more about it is Professor of Marine Science at the Florida Gulf Coast University, Dr. Mike Parsons. Dr. Parsons, thank you for being with us. So what causes a bloom like the one that we're seeing right now? So the basic ingredients for a bloom are sunlight and nutrients. And so there's a lot of concern, of course, on why we're seeing such large amounts of sargassum forming this year and in previous years. So what is the why? Well, we don't know exactly, but our thoughts are that there are nutrients being input from the Amazon River in South America, Brazil, and those nutrient inputs probably have increased over the last 10 years or so with development, deforestation, and also there's upwelling of deep nutrient-rich water off the coast of Africa. So a combination of those two factors seem to have increased the amount of nutrients that can feed sargassum. And what do we have to compare this one to? Have we seen one quite this large? This one's projecting to be quite a big one, but in 2018, we've had some big ones. Um, we've had them um, a couple years over the past 10 years that have been about this size, but it's projecting to be one of the larger ones this year. So the concern is it's going to reach Florida's coastline at a busy time for summer. It's going to be smelly. There are some health issues. What are some options to, to diminish the risk to human before it gets on shore? Well, basically, the, the two options really would be to avoid it. But of course, uh, you know, the city of Miami and other uh, beachfront towns don't want people to, to leave the area, so the other option would be to clean it up as quickly as you can. Is an option to break it up before it gets to shore? That is an option, but it's not as cheap as waiting for it to come ashore. But to be really proactive, that would probably be a, a good attempt to make. Um, but I don't think we're quite there in terms of having the resources and the funding to be able to do that. How much of the Florida coastline do we expect to be impacted by this bloom? It will probably be impacting the panhandle up in um, the northern Gulf of Mexico a little bit, but most of the impacts will be in southeast Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, as it rides in the Gulf Stream heading up to the uh, northeast in the Gulf, excuse me, in the uh, Atlantic Ocean. Where is it right now, Dr. Parsons, and how fast is it moving? Well, think of it as a conveyor belt. So some of it has already entered into the Gulf of Mexico, has already circled back past the Florida Keys up onto the East Coast near Miami and in the Caribbean islands. But this process is gonna continue for several months. So once it comes ashore in these parts of Florida that you're talking about, what is the cleanup effort like? What types of things will they be doing? One, to learn more about it, but two, to make sure that people and animals are safe. Basically, the, the two things related to that would be any kind of beach combing type apparatus, which would be anything from a person with a rake to some tractor with a backhoe or other raking mechanism to remove it. And then otherwise, um, you're looking at public service announcements and basically just letting the public know that the sargassum is around. And if you really smell the outgassing of the degraded sargassum probably find a way to get fresh air. Mm. We're looking at some of the images now. It's ugly, it doesn't smell good, but once it's out in the ocean or before it reaches shore, are there some benefits to these things? Yeah, sargassum is um, a habitat in and of itself. It is an algae that floats around and grows in the ocean. There's a lot of organisms that depend on it for both food and for a home, if you will. So it is definitely part of the ecosystem. But for some reason, uh, we are seeing a lot of it lately. And so we're not sure if this is the new normal or if we're just going through some kind of oceanographic process that just really favors sargassum over these past several years. Mm, I guess the hope is maybe we learn a lot from this one to answer some of those questions. It is an eyesore, though. Uh, Dr. Michael yes. Parsons, uh, thank you for being with us this morning. Interesting. Uh Yep, thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.